Andrew McCart, IFL TV and Association with MTK Global. I'm here in Sheffield. With me I've got the main man himself, Billy Joe Saunders. How are you Billy? Not too bad, not too bad. This year to support my man Dante Dixon, Cal Brook and Galad. Hopefully a good night, get the tree of wins and uh, then move on to myself. Talk to you about Dante Dixon then. I spoke to him uh, yesterday, quite a bright young man. Yep. Uh, he's just starting off in his career. For people that haven't seen him or don't know much about Dante, just break it down for us. Do you know what? <clears throat> I, I believe in giving people chances, and you know where he's from in Sheffield, and um, what he's, you know, where his his backgrounds come from. I see him in the in the gym. That, you know, I was speaking to a couple of people at now, and they said, you know, he's a bit fiery. He's up and down. You know, he's in the streets up and down. And you know, I, I see him spar, and I thought, do you know what? It's a world champion in the making. Um, but do you know? Uh, when you look at someone and you think I can really I could see like a mirror image of myself in him mm -hmm. you know he's a bit he's very very confident you know he don't care who he mixes it with or gets in with but he's a real real good talent and when I see him spar Kid Galahad and you know I'll see the video footage of, uh, of uh, the Lee Wood spars and Jordan Gills you know he's to hold his own and to do really well against them sort of fellas he's up there in the mix Wait, it's, it's still early but do you think he can go all the way? Look, it, it's it's hard. Oh, we're going, pal. It's hard just to say he's going to go all the way because, you know, there's the dedication side of things. There's the round side of things. Is he going to adapt to the rounds? You know, can he stick the pressure? We don't know that. Yet. So there's a lot of boxes we've got to be ticked. But at the moment, you know, I've, I've only got him, and I'm, I'm putting a lot of time into him and getting him dates. Um, but I, I, I believe he can go all the way. I believe what I've seen. I believe, you know. So. Um, Hopefully he can. The um, the thing is with tonight is that funny enough that um, obviously I've been away doing my own business and uh, hey and um, an opponent got sent through and I just looked at the record and well, it was a two and two record and yeah. I said yeah but I've uh, I've looked and this kid's he's only been beaten he's only been beaten by um, a thirteen and oh far and he's beat somebody from um, from the gym out of my bag where I train is someone called Costa mm -hmm. and this kid's beat him and I love watching Costa spa he's always in tear ups like if I'm training I sit mm -hmm. and watch this little uh, Spanish kid spa I love watching him love his style and I was thinking fucking hell like <laughs> he's in for a tough night then if this is the case you know but I believe he can come through any sort of um, opposition at the minute you know at the right level and I think that you know this is going to be a sturdy test for him tonight because you know if he stops him it really really will impress me but you know, I'll be happy of a good points win, looking good. You mentioned that you mentioned uh, Kel and Kid Gala, a couple of ex gym mates and friends of yours. I mean, they're on the obviously top of the bill here tonight. Kel Brook, just talk to me about Kel Brook. Does he have to look 100% a million dollars tonight because he can't win ugly if he's got <coughs> another world title shot? Can he? Do, do you know what does me? A lot of people saying, oh, you know, if you don't stop him, Adam brother, if you don't stop him, he's got to retire. If you don't, you know. These kids who's coming to fight someone like Cal Brook are coming and fighting for their life. Mm -hmm. They're fighting Cal Brook. In their eyes, Cal Brook now is still world champion, world elite, which he is. You know, people's got their opinion on Cal, but you know, I've seen a bit of a change in him. And as long as he boxes well and wins nice, you know, boxes lovely, looks good, looks fresh, looks looks comfortable. I don't care about the knockout, as long as he just plays it safe. You know, he's been out for 16 months. You mm -hmm. can't expect him to come there and look a million dollars. And this is before the fight here, I'm talking. This ain't after the fight, this mm -hmm. is before the fight. So he's boxing the next Royal Marine, tough gang, come forward. So listen, I'm expecting him to win, but I just want to see how he wins. I told him, you know, he always gives me advice, so I'll give him advice as a friend. I said, look, don't look to knock him out. Mm -hmm. Soften him up, have a look, enjoy yourself. You know, you're in there for 36 minutes or less. If it's less, it's a bonus. If it's not, just look good doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, that puts him on the next step straight away. Does he jump straight into a world title shot? Because the 154 pound division, your old division, it's like they're playing hot potato with these world titles, isn't they? They're, they're just getting passed around. But <coughs> does, does Kel jump straight into a world title shot or do you think he can No, I, I, what I, what honestly, Smith's been mentioned. Listen, my saying. honest opinion, I'd love to see the Liam Smith fight. Mm -hmm. Then the winner of that fight for a world title. Um, Kel's, Kel Brook is a very, very, very special talent. Very special. Um, he punches very, very hard for his weight. You know, he's very clever. And you know, people looking at him, oh, he's, you know, he's this, he's that, he's, he's quit, he's done this. He's had, he's had some bad injuries. So that's 17 months. Might have done him very, very well. But I would like to see him have this fight. Look good doing it. 
get the Liam Smith fight, then I know he can come. I know he can be world champion again, hundred percent. Kid Galahad. Kid Galahad. Yeah. Do you know what? <clears throat> a lot of people saying he looked a little bit drawn in on the scales mm. yesterday and that, but you know, I see a picture of him. I thought he looked very, very well. Um, you know, again, the pressure's on him because this is our final eliminator. So he 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 has to win. You know, this is not this ain't a fight he can afford to mm. lose if he wants to another shot at world title because there's no one going to give him a shot at world title so we're picking him as a mandatory because uh, pick him as a voluntary sorry because no one's not going to do that it, you know he becomes mandatory if he wins this so that means Josh Warren has to fight him otherwise he's never going to get another world shot world title shot so he has to win this should we talk about you then talk about there's the man yeah, to talk about me look at that look at that he's perfect timing right. he's messed Coogan's interview I was just about to ask about the Canelo situation <coughs> with him but you're the perfect man to probably talk about nothing Eddie. really we're, we're, we're talking a few minor discussions unfortunately in this situation Billy Billy's probably not the best person to I was deal with this situation but you unfortunately have to wait and just he is in a position like AJ would be like where it's like it's you or it's you and then once it's you you negotiate fairly and you know, he's not looking to be greedy he wants to fight he wouldn't price himself out of the fight he wants to fight but also he's world champion so you know I think uh, there haven't been I've read like Joe Gallagher all message me oh, I heard Billy Joe's getting announced today and then someone will say oh Callum Smith's got the fight but honestly all there's been is a couple of conversations um, explain the conversations Eddie while we're on camera please uh, like to hear this some, uh, oh. some minor talk of numbers and bits and pieces is this with Canelo yeah I don't want to say anything that's going to piss anyone off you don't mind because you, you, you don't mind that but I want to <laughs> make sure that someone gets a fight and you, if you're going to get the fight Billy's never going to play ball and not speak his mind mm. that's what he does that's actually why he's actually so interested in fights because, and especially in build ups because mm. he's actually quite amusing I want to ask Eddie. See, a couple, a few weeks ago, maybe mm. around Christmas time, he was the front runner. That's what a yeah. couple of news outlets were mm -hmm. saying. Then Murata popped his head up, and mm -hmm. he was the front mm -hmm. runner. Then that's fell down. Is then Oscar come out and said it's definitely not. And it's definitely not him. Yeah, so, yeah. who do we is believe? He's right, What's going on? I believe that him and Callum Smith are, are the front runners for the fight. Again, no, no, no one out of him and Callum. I can honestly tell you, in like a better position, or someone's always looks like that's about to drop. But at the moment, it just seems that there's a bit of fishing from them to see who's interested, how much it's going to cost. But it's made a second. So mm. I know he will want to announce that fight in the next couple of weeks. Is it either Billy Joe or Callum? Or is there something else I would think, think so. But again, yeah. I don't know what conversations are happening. I mean, I do think Morata was, in the end, the one they were going to go with and it fell through. Bit, so of, a, bit of a shit fight though, isn't it? Morata. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just to be honest with you, he's useless. Mm. He's been beat by, um, what's that fellow's name, Martin Murray, boxed... Um, and Dan. And Dan, yeah. And Dan. Then he and got beat uh, Bran. by Bran. Like, he's, it's not really a sellable fight, but if it's in Japan... I think it was a Tokyo Dome, it was Japan, it was, you know, all those things, but... This one looks like it's going to be Vegas, and, uh, you know, you, you want him... Oh, listen, the one thing I'll say about Canelo is you can't really knock his resume. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, last year his resume <laughs> was Danny Jacobs and Kovalev. We know Kovalev was getting on a bit. Danny Jacobs was in his prime. He was a world champion. You know, now it looks like if he fights Billy or Callum, he's going to be fighting another super middleweight world champion. So, you know, I think it's good that it's not Morata and it is one of those guys. But For some mad reason that Canelo doesn't pick Billy Joe or Callum mm -hmm. Smith, am I wrong in saying that we could probably see they Billy Joe and Callum? They I spoke 100%. to Callum's guys today and he, they feel the same. They both want the biggest fight out there, mm -hmm. right? And that is Canelo Alvarez. Beyond that, they both want another big fight. They don't want a voluntary defence. They've had those, you know, and now they, they're at a stage in their career where if they want to actually create a big legacy, earn a pot of money, now is the time to do it because now is the time when they can win those fights. I also think it's about, like you say, legacy going on. You've got to secure, you know, the right fights at the right time. And like, I respect that Canelo fights and everything's being talked about, but what what I don't want is just to be tracked like a, a piece of meat. We're pulling him about when he wants. I'm world champion. I know it's big money, but at the end of the day, I don't really care about. I don't, it is about the money, but I'd rather get the win and have the money. Do you know what I mean? So as long as it's fair, because you know that you know there's a lot of decisions going in. It's always tough when you, you know, listen, you, you especially know, on that sort of day. You so. know that when you go out there, you've got to do that a little bit more mm. to get the victory. That's just. 
unfortunately how it is you know you're fighting the biggest star really in his backyard what has become his backyard in Las Vegas but Billy don't really realise and I'll talk to him about it tonight but it's not a case of Canelo or nothing you know we've got plans three or four plans beyond that if he don't get Canelo because right now I'm treating it like we're not getting Canelo because if you have that mentality you have a plan in place if we do brilliant that is a, a real bonus, and that's the biggest fight out there for him. That's the fight I would like him to get. But if not, there's Callum Smith, yeah. there's Danny Jacobs, there's particularly Andrade. Demetrius Andrade, yeah. which is a fight that can be made, like, that's almost ready to go. He's willing to move up to super middle, as talked about before, it's a big fight in America, it can fight over here. So, you know, it, it's you can't just sit and wait, and we're not doing that, because that's when he wants to fight, so. Somebody said an interesting thing to me yesterday, he said that Canelo's only had trouble with pure boxers, mm. like Floyd Mayweather, Mayweather uh, Lara. Sunny, Lara. I mean, Billy's been trout. in that trout. Yeah, he, Billy's been in there with the pure mm -hmm. boxing, and the mm -hmm. skill set and whatnot. Do you think that Billy's probably the toughest test for Canelo out there? I think uh, Billy's in the same sort of boat as Demetrius, where they are pure boxers mm -hmm. who are difficult to beat. And maybe that's why he's never had the fights that he's perhaps wanted in the past, because they look at Billy Joe Saunders and say, Fuck, he's tough to beat. But Andrade's boxed a load of bums, to be fair. Yeah. He sort of, yeah, he sort of, he sort of called you out on the app. He went, yeah, I said, yeah. yeah. but your, your resume, your resume. <laughs> it's better than his. I'll beat world, I'll beat world, I'll beat world class fighters. Right, he, yeah, but he's never boxed best, no one. Your best wins are Andy Lee and David Lemieux. Yeah. Right, and the, the performance against Lemieux was one of the best performances I've ever seen. Name one good fighter he's beat, though, Andrade. Like, no disrespect to his box, but name one good well, fight. I don't, I don't feel like... Name one name that he, that lady or this fella that holding that camera know, and he's a boxing man. No, they won't. They probably won't know. Exactly. So well, they can, they, they know, you know, David Lemieux at least, even though he's probably a bit useless anyway. And he You're not interested in Andrade, right? Yeah, I am, yeah, 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 I am. I am. But, like I say, it's... Uh, I want the biggest. It's points going back from myself. You know, I want to fight. I want to fight the best. I want to fight the best. But you know, it, I've been waiting for Canelo for a long, long time. You know, and then when they come to the table and go, it could be Canelo. It's sort of like a bit of a, a bit of I've heard it before, bullshit sort of thing. You know what I mean? In my own head, because I've had it before. You know, obviously when I was with Frank and Glockin twice. So. I've been at the table with these before, and I know I'm at the table with a different man than Eddie and that, but I believe... Well, the I only believe advantage you've got now is it's the same network. It doesn't mean... It's still, mm -hmm. it's still the same man making the decisions, so they either want it or they don't. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, what well, I feel with Billy and with Demetrius, I feel like they're in a similar boat where they could be the best in their respective divisions. Or, that in, you know, one might be the best, in, but until they fight those guys, we won't know. And he wants to fight those guys because he wants to prove he's the best. So it's frustrating because people like Charlo, people like Canelo, people like Triple G, you know, all these people don't, I believe, look at Billy and Demetrius and say, yeah, them. They're not the straightforward up and down first pick of saying, that's a good start for me, I'll get there in there. They know that, and he's like got this quirky, weird thing, whereas when you actually put him in the deep end, he, he go, his, his levels go up. Mm -hmm. So like last time, you found him in a fight where probably wasn't that motivated, knew he could beat that guy, like 99 times out of 100 and sometimes Billy will go to the level that he's in there with and when he has to step up like I didn't think he'd beat Andy Lee when he boxed I watched that fight and it was a, a brilliant performance against Lemieux I thought he'd get stopped I mean it was embarrassing the fight do you know what I mean mm -hmm. and at the time I, was, I didn't really like him that much and I was watching the fight thinking <laughs> yeah, hell, he, 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 he only stayed up to watch him get chinned <laughs> <laughs> that's all he done so now I've got to watch you don't want to try and get me yeah, chinned no, no, right you're relaxed now we're right behind you you're best friends no, yeah, no, no, no. I just want to say I'd listen like you have to understand that my credibility is on the line to get him a big fight mm. when he took the trust in us it was for us to deliver him a big fight and if we don't do that we failed and I don't fail but unfortunately he don't know me well enough to know that yet so I've got to prove it to him so you're probably going to have to go over this again with Coogan when you catch it at the end oh, well, of the night. this is the thing isn't it <laughs> this is it <laughs> this is it uh, right thanks Eddie okay. thanks alright mate you just uh, interrupted us there, didn't you? Yeah, sorry, mate. No, I think that's probably everything I was going to ask. But obviously, I wanted to ask, uh, obviously, a good friend of mine, Josh Taylor, came out to Dubai to train with you. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to get your thoughts on Josh and how, how do you look out in Dubai? Do you know what? I think he's an amazing talent. I think, um, you know, the world can see that. <clears throat> you don't get to where he's got to in, uh, in boxing just by being um, average. He's absolutely frightening talent. I think there's... Um, there's a few areas that he can improve on. I think he will do. He's not silly. He knows a couple of few bits and bobs, but 
I think that he's the best in the division. I know he's the best in the division. Well, ask as well, what do you think about what Eddie was saying there about the Canelo fight? That do you know what? Listen, expectations on the line to get you. Uh, look, I'll, I'll be honest with you, and it's just everything is in the wind. I like to call it bullshit. That's the reason why the set there be quiet because listen, if I say I'm going to do something, I will do it and show you I'm going to do it. I won't talk about it. Now, if I say I'm going to beat someone, I'll beat them. And until that fight's pen to paper, Eddie can tell me I'm front runner, Callum Smith's front runner, but until they come to me and go, there's your contract, there's your fight date, let's go. I want other plans. I don't want to be, same as Eddie said, I don't want to bank around Canelo. Mm -hmm. If I don't get Canelo, then, oh, you're fighting in eight weeks against Callum Smith or, I don't know, whoever. You are 12-week camp? Oh, I'm, I'm in camp now. Mm. So I'm staying ready. I've been in camp now for a month. So, you know, I'm in camp. But, you know, what people need to realise is that a fighter, you've got to be physically, mentally, everything ready to rock and roll. In my own head now, I'm in the gym every day looking at Canelo. But the fight world really is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Because is it going to happen? I don't know. Are they going to, are they thinking, I don't know. They might think, oh, he's not training. We'll catch him off guard. But that ain't going to be the case. I'm going to be ready. But I would like to know because, you know, I just want to get on with it. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I won't keep you much longer. I know you've got to do something with Dan Barker yep. and Chris Lloyd, but I know I'm not Coogan and you asked for them, but I appreciate you for, for your time. No, you, I prefer you better than Coogan. I appreciate it. Thanks very much, my man. Thank Cheers, you. Bill. Cheers, Billy. Oh, yeah,